Kumar and Sail from QuickNode. And today, I'll talk about flash loans and how they change the working of loans on blockchains. Today, in this video, we will cover flash loans, flash loans on our way, how to deploy a smart contracts on Remix IDE, how to import a smart contract from GitHub into your Solidity code. And then finally, we will deploy a smart contract to perform a flash loan all on Mumbai Polygon testnet. So let's jump into it. Flash loans are one of the most innovative concepts of DeFi. In a flash loan, someone can borrow a loan amount without even a need of collateral. But given the condition that that particular loan is repaid again in the same transaction along with some interest fee. Now, this might seem a bit weird and strange, right? Like how can a loan be borrowed and paid all everything in one transaction? But that's the case with flash loan. That's the innovativeness of flash loan. We will learn more about that. But before that, let's learn about traditional loans and transactions. In a traditional loan scenario, whenever someone seeks some loan from a lender or loan giver, they keep something of higher value as collateral to guarantee that if that person fails to repay the loan, the loan giver or loan lender can keep that collateral with them. There's nothing wrong in this system. This system has been in place for years, decades, or maybe even centuries. But imagine a scenario where someone wants to still borrow some amount as loan, but they don't have anything to keep as collateral. So that's where flash loan comes into the picture. In a flash loan scenario, anyone can borrow a loan without a need for collateral, as I explained earlier. And now let's understand about transactions. So transactions on Ethereum are atomic in nature, just like the real world transactions. Atomic in nature means if something has to happen, it has to happen 100% or it won't happen at all. So let's understand this more with an example of ATM cash withdrawal transaction. So in this scenario of ATM cash withdrawal transaction, there has to be certain steps which needs to be followed for the entire transaction to go through. The first step being verifying the card details of the person who wants to withdraw the cash, then fetching the bank details like bank account number, bank balance from the bank servers. The next step would be to check if the user's bank balance has sufficient amount according to the requested cash. Then the last step would be to deploy or to dispatch the cash and deducting the cash amount from the person's or user's account balance. So in this scenario, if any of the step fails, the transaction will fail. And that's the same case with Ethereum transactions as well. Let's imagine there is a smart contract which helps you swap some tokens with ERC20 token. So in this scenario, a person who is holding ETH has to have sufficient ETH in their wallet and the smart contract should have sufficient equivalent ERC20 tokens. If any of the criteria is mismatched or not satisfied, the transaction won't happen and it will fail. But the person still has to pay for gas fee. These checks are there in place to avoid any kind of inconsistencies on the blockchain ledger. And now that we know about traditional loans and how transactions work on Ethereum, let's understand about flash loans on Aave. So Aave is a DeFi provider which also supports flash loans and anyone can borrow a flash loan from Aave's lending pools, but they have to return the loan with 0.09% of interest. So in this video, we will construct a smart contract to take a flash loan from Aave. Flash loans can have multiple use cases where a logic can be applied or a certain application can be done between the borrowing and repaying of the loan. The most common one is arbitrage. When someone will borrow something 
or someone will borrow some assets or tokens from Aave's lending pool and then buy something on one dex, let's say Sushi Swap, and then buy it on Uniswap where there is a price difference. Let's say Sushi Swap has lower price and Uniswap has higher price and they will gain arbitrage profit in this process. And then after that, paying the actual borrowed loan amount or tokens along with the interest fee. This is just one example of arbitrage transactions, but there can be a whole lot of different examples. This guide and repo will be linked in the description. So let's understand what this smart contract is all about and how you can deploy these smart contracts. So the first line is to mention the license of the smart contract, which is MIT in this case, which means open source. This is a very high level understanding that it's open source license. On the second line, we are mentioning the Solidity version, which is to be used for this smart contract, which is 0 0.8.10 in this case. On line 456, we are importing some smart contracts from GitHub, which are deployed by Aave. Oh, so to import a smart contract from GitHub, you just have to go to the smart contract file, copy the URL from the domain bar, then paste it into your code between quotes and use import keyword. On line 9th, we are actually starting our contract called Simple Flash Loan, which is extending Flash Loan Simple Receiver Base smart contract, which is our smart contract. On line 10, we are declaring a variable called owner, which is of type address. And we are also saying that it's payable means that owner will pay something. Then we are starting our constructor with address provider as parameter. Address provider is nothing but the address of the lending pool, which is managed by iPool address provider smart contract. On line 17 is the actual function which will do the flash loan. So the function's name which we have given is fn underscore request flash loan it takes in five parameters the first one being request address or receiver's address and that will be the address of this smart contract itself then the second is asset which is the erc20 token the third is amount the amount of tokens which are to be borrowed and then these two variables we won't be using but these are requirements by the interface of flash loan simple receiver base which is a smart contract by Aave so we have just mentioned it and not given any or not supplied any value to it to interact with pool we will use this pool function and give it all of these parameters which we are supplying to function request flash loan so this process will give us tokens will help us borrow tokens from the lending pool and over here you can write your own logic to swap tokens or to do any kind of function between borrowing and repaying the flash loan for example this this is a function which is an example function to show you folks that you can do a logic or you can do a function between borrowing and repaying of the flash loan. After that, we are calculating the total amount which is to be paid back to the lending pool, which is a combination of amount plus premium, which is the interest fee. On this line, we are approving the ERC20 token with the lending pool so that we can interact with the lending pool for that particular token. So now that we have our smart contract set up, let's compile it. So after comp compilation, you'll see that there are these two warnings, 
which are intended because we are not using these two variables which are related to this and after that click on deploy but before that make sure while you are compiling you have 0 0.8010 compiler version selected or it will give you an error on the deploy window select injected provider metamask in this case and what we will do now is add our quick note rpc to propagate our transactions faster on matic's mumbai testnet and mind it i'm saying propagate not speed up our transaction so quick note can propagate your transactions to a wide variety of mempools across the globe which increases the probability of your transactions to get picked up by a validator and this doesn't necessarily ensure the speed of your transactions because it depends completely on validators so to do to add your quick node rpc to your non custodial wallet or metamask in this case just open the wallet click on add network then add a network manually i'll give it a name quick node mumbai paste the rpc url over here add the chain id which is 8001 for matic mumbai then add matic as the currency Eight zero 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 one is the chain ID of Matic Mumbai. So save it, and then you will need some testnet Matic to pay for gas fee while deploying your smart contract, and to pay for gas fee while interacting or doing write operations to your smart contract. You can get the test Matic or Mumbai Matic. from quicknode faucet by connecting your wallet then selecting polygon and mumbai so let's come back to our remix id and then we will need a pool providers address or lending pool providers address so we can get that from ave docs which are on docs.ave.com and we are dealing with version 3 contracts of ave which is the latest version of ave on that click on version 3 contracts find this page called v3 testnet addresses go to polygon mumbai tab find this address called pool address provider polygon and copy this address go back to remix paste this address over here what we will be doing is we will be deploying our smart contract using this lending pool providers address click on deploy it will open the remix it will open the it will open the metamask window to sign the transaction and once you have signed the transaction it will say pending over here and once the transaction is confirmed you will get the confirmation over here just like this so as you can see our contract is under deployed contracts and now we will need to send some usdc to our smart contract because our smart contract will need to pay some interest fee on the amount which we will be borrowing if you don't have test net usdc you can go to staging.ave.com connect your wallet go to faucet tab and then click on faucet adjust into usdc and once it loads click faucet usdc and they'll send some usdc to you and they are pretty generous about it they'll send like 10k usdc to you but don't get too much excited because this is just testnet usdc not real life money or real world money So what we'll do is we'll send some USDC to our con. We'll send one USDC because we just need to cover the interest fee, which is zero point zero nine percent, not too much. We'll click on next and wait for it to load. 
let's do the process again looks like metamask didn't like us paste the contract address again enter the amount click on next wait for it to load click confirm and you can see it's under pending we'll get our confirmation over here once the transaction is completed it's still under pending what you can do is sometimes you can click on speed up it will increase the gas which with which the transaction is sent and it will increase the speed of your transaction because it will increase the priority fee on your transaction so it looks like the transaction is confirmed now let's confirm it on polygon scan by pasting our smart contract address on polygon scan so it says that it has one token which is usdc so all right our smart contract now have one usdc which it can use to pay the interest fee so quickly go again to our docs find usdc's address or contract address then come back to remix id click on function request flash loan click on token then paste the address over here paste the amount of tokens which you need to borrow which is 10 in our case so this is the beauty of flash loan our smart contract only has one usdc but it can borrow 10 usdc's or maybe even more until it has sufficient usdc's to cover for interest fee so whenever you are entering a token amount in solidity or in smart contracts you need to enter it with decimals as well so decimals of usdc is six so we will need to add six more zeros so after 10 one two three one two three and then click on transact it will open the metamask window again to ask for your confirmation once you have confirmed and signed the transaction it will say that it's under pending state and as you can see our transaction is already confirmed we'll expand it get the transaction hash go back to the polygon scan paste it over here and check if we have already done a flash loan or not so as you can see we have borrowed 10 usdc and repaid 10 usdc along with 0 0.005 usdc as interest fee all of this in just one transaction this is how a flash loan works and mind it this is no way a financial advice since flash loans require you to work with financial assets or tokens please do your due diligence and please be very careful whenever you are working with real life money or tokens so thank you so much if you have watched this video until now and we will be coming up with more videos like this with more videos on smart contract deployments and with more videos to make your journey in deploying smart contracts easy subscribe to the quick note youtube channel give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comment section what you'd like to see next thank you everyone